Hello there, my friends. How are you? Welcome. It's a pleasure to see you here. This is Keith from the Key Speaking Academy. And today we've got a great live lesson all about food. We'll be looking at vocabulary, answering different questions about food, um, idioms about food, lots of interesting stuff. But listen, let's get going with a little bit of this. Hello, my friends. How are you? Nice to see you again. It's been a long time, but of course, at the moment now, I'm doing the live lessons um, the first Thursday. <laughs> Say that quickly five times. The first Thursday of every month. So today I'm excited because it is, <laughs> well, it is the first Thursday of the month of May. Today we've got this exciting topic of what? Of food, right? One of my favourite topics. I, it's the same shirt. <laughs> Look, it's it's even the same orange. Food is a really, really, um, it's an interesting topic. It's a very popular one in IELTS speaking um, because we get a lot of questions around food. You may get questions around cooking, going to a restaurant, special occasions or special events. There's lots of areas that connect with this topic of food. So I think this will be very, very interesting for you. Um, by the way, if you are out there on um, on YouTube, then do remember, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel, English Speaking Success. Um, turn on the notifications if you want to find out about other videos coming this way. I also do recorded videos um, um, on Saturday the in the middle of the month. So that will be coming up soon as well to let you know. Um, if you're following me on Facebook, fantastic. Um, if you haven't joined the Facebook group, come and join us. Keith's Mastermind Community for IELTS Speaking. You can search in Facebook and um, find us there. We're sharing ideas, um, answers, um, language, motivation. Can you share motivation? You can motivate each other. I can't. Can I? I can give you my motivation. Maybe you can share motivation. Anyway, there's lots of it there. So come and join us in the Facebook group. Be good to see you there. Um, and if you don't know, some of you may not know, I do actually run the um, the website, the Keith Speaking Academy, um, and it's all about IELTS speaking. There's lots of information there. You can find out about the course. You can get PDFs from these live lessons for free. Um, you can read articles about IELTS. You can follow courses. I've got online courses there. One of the most popular ones is the IELTS Speaking Success. Get a band seven plus gold. Cha-cha. That's there. You can find out on the website all about it. Um, and if you just want something to read, go and check out the um, 10 most common mistakes made in IELTS speaking. Let me move you up, my friend. Um, you can download that for free on the website as well, and it will help you avoid the mistakes that I have seen so many students make. Um, it's well worth getting and finding out about. Nice. So good. That's it. So just to remind you, we're talking about food. Let's see who's in the house over here. Ramiz Khan, excited to attend your class. Great, good to see you here. Great. Vladimir, lovely to see you as well over here. You've got a gloomy day. We've got a bit of a sunny day today. Bin An from Vietnam. Stefano, nice to see you. Fra Sardinia, another live fantastic lesson. Great, lovely to see you, Stefano. Um, we've got Min Tuan Nguyen, Clara. Yeah, nice entrance music, Clara. You're right, it was interesting. RTM, nice to see you again. Amna um, from Dubai. Amina, sorry, pronounce your name right. Good. Um, Julia's here. Huda, Anna, Leon, Chio. Hello, Keith. Hello, Anna. Nice to see you. And Nilofar says, food is my fave topic. It's also my favourite topic. I love not only talking about it, but eating it as well. We have in English this expression, right? If you're comparing two things that are very, very different, 
we say it's like comparing apples and oranges if you so you can't compare apples and oranges you must compare oranges with oranges it's an interesting expression i realized as i was preparing that that this is actually not an orange it's a mandarin yeah mandarin as in chinese language but we also use the word mandarin and this is not a pear if you look closely it's a plum right now mandarins and plums they have different flavors i'm going to talk about the different flavors in a moment but before i do for those of you who have just arrived welcome come and sit down i hope you've got a drink and a little snack to keep you going because it's quite a long class but it'll be fun and exciting i promise you this is what we're going to do today right um we're going to talk about food this is one of my favorite characters from literature um poo bear yeah i know poo as in go to the toilet but it's spelled p o o h poo bear so poo is um here helping us learn about food <laughs> <coughs> excuse me we're going to look at vocabulary um lots of vocabulary to talk about food and also special occasions right because special occasions is a big topic in in IELTS talking about an event maybe that was very expensive that was very interesting that was very boring could be a birthday or a wedding and food plays a key role so we're going to look at the food we eat on special occasions and eating habits a bit like this lady right do you enjoy snacking if <laughs> seriously <laughs> seriously uh what kind of eating habits do you have do you snack um do you binge eat we're going to be discussing that hopefully you're not doing what she's doing um and we're going to have a look at Keith in the kitchen i couldn't do this topic without taking you into my <laughs> into my kitchen without taking you um and showing you a small video about me it's actually it's not in the kitchen but it is in the kitchen confused stick around and find out idioms we're going to look at some idioms today also about um well like the proof is in the pudding do you know this idiom the proof is in the pudding it's an interesting idiom and today we're going to find out exactly what that means so we've got lots of exciting stuff let's leave winnie the pooh for the moment um and just check in with how people are doing um we've got ila taku thank you i find your class is useful great great to hear that um <laughs> pradeep says it's it it is going to be ready to pig out on a signature dish we're going to talk about signature dishes and what that means today um excellent azal is excited lovely to see you here um huda is a fan of winnie the pooh me too i love winnie the pooh that's why he's here here <laughs> mosum what's the difference between tangerine and mandarin i d i don't really know because for me they they're more or less the same um i think tangerines are a little bit smaller and sweeter than mandarin but i'm sure if we had a nutrition expert they could tell us you've also got clementines somebody mentioned clementines they're all similar things really very juicy very tasty yeah <clears throat> yuna first time to join hello great nice to see you here um we've also got isaac jang or chang from china lovely to see you here and duck from hanoi great and mary all the way from brazil good day nice to see you mary so food let's begin right let's talk about food Oh before we talk about food sorry can i share a picture with you because i got a lovely email from a lovely person the other day um and she was telling me about her study with me and on the course and how she was enjoying it um and she likes to draw and she drew this wonderful picture over here which she agreed i could share with you now this is me <laughs> and it's perfect um and it's keith's key message and i think she hit the nail on the head she says maybe you have to spend some time studying english for the ielts exam 
but learning English can be fun and enjoyable. Isn't that an amazing picture? And I love how she has um, captured the message, which is so true. I mean, it can be quite overwhelming. <gasps> so much to do for IELTS preparation, but it should be fun, engaging, because then the more you're enjoying it, the deeper you're learning, right? So that was from Layla. Thank you so much, Layla, for that picture. I really do appreciate it. Great. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> we're back. Somebody says, welcome back after after Eid. Yeah, as well. I hope you've enjoyed Eid and you're uh, enjoying your food again. Right, so maybe this is a, a good time to do the topic of food now that... <laughs> <clears throat> is it a third of the world was fasting? I'm not sure how many. Maybe a quarter of the world was fasting. Hopefully not now. Good. I'm going to move in and go straight into vocabulary, right? Essential vocabulary. So adjectives to describe food, show different kinds of food. Well, I was talking about this, about these mandarins and um, plums, right? Mandarins, I think, are quite... Um, they're quite what? I'm going to open this. Mandarins are quite... Ugh. It's difficult to peel. They should be really easy to peel, right? Usually. Now, mandarins are normally... Oh, look at that. Juice everywhere. Would you believe it? Would you, Adam and Eve, it? Never work live with animals, children and fruit. Normally, this I'm going to regret this, but normally they are... Um, Juicy and sweet. Mm. 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 Juicy and sweet. They are very, very nice. Plums, on the other hand, are not sweet, right? They're quite sour. So I'm not going to eat that because they're a bit too sour. But it brings me to this um, whole point of different tastes and flavour. So, for example, what kind of taste and flavour are these? I've given you the first letter. Sour, I mentioned, right, for a plum example. Um, what are these other words describing taste and flavour? Can you guess? Let's see. We've got Meecha Wong says sweet. Um, Agnes says juicy. Saitama says acidic. Could be acidic. Yes. Um, what else have we got? Let's see. Citrusy. I'm not sure that that's a word. I understand it because we say citrus, a citrus fruit. Citrusy. Nice. Tangy, juicy, acidic. All of those are good. <laughs> juicy and sweet. Okay. Right. Juicy and dry. That's interesting. How can it be juicy and dry? Because juicy means there's a lot of juice. I would say dry is the opposite. I agree some oranges like this one are juicy, but some oranges are dry because I think they're not juicy. So maybe, I don't know, maybe that's what you mean. I'm going to try and say that orange is juicy or dry um, and actually Ram is if I can because this is a great learning opportunity that mandarins are all making a mess um, when we talk about fruit right um, and different kinds of food very often we use the plural because we're talking about lots or all of the oranges right oranges in general so it's always safer when you're talking about fruit or most food, let's say fruit, oranges are juicy or dry, right? That's much better. And I'm going to put this in because you're absolutely right. That is the word I was thinking of, like uh, orange, right? Sour, like a plum. Um, fantastic. Let's see others. Armin says sweet, and I'm going to put that in. Thank you very much. Sweet like a mandarin. What else is sweet? 
things are sweet. Um, I think carrots are sweet. Man, mandarins. Okay. <laughs> Larry, can I have some, please? Yes, of course you can. <laughs> Uh, what else have we got? Juicy, sour, sweet. What about the P and the S? Anybody? Daniela, I am so hungry. Yes. <laughs> Eben, okay, salt. Now, I'm going to add one here because salt, we would actually say salty, right? Um, like anchovies. Anchovies. They are salty. So with a flavor, a flavor of salt, we'd say salty. Very nice. Persian girl is eating macaroni while she's watching. <laughs> Lucky you. This is nice. Pungent. Nerd guy. Great name. Great handle. Pungent. I'm going to go with that because absolutely pungent. So pungent just means um, it's a strong smell. If it's a strong smell and a strong flavour. For example, if you're familiar with Indian cooking, oh, you'll be familiar with these, right? Can you smell those? Can you hear them? I could do ASMR. Triggers. <laughs> these are cardamom. Cardamom, right? Um, oh, absolutely delicious. I've got to put some in my tea. Lovely. Cardamom. Um, that's a pungent spice, if you like. So pungent. Um, so let's put in maybe a lot of curries can be pungent, right? Absolutely. Very, very nice. Lovely. Good. Where are we? Thank you, nerd guy. <laughs> I feel bad when I say that. Uh, Noah, you're very welcome. Thank you for your comment. I'm trying to find some. Anybody else got another S? Avocado is creamy. That's right, says Hisha. Yes. Um, Huang, you've come up here, Huang, with a very good idiom, which will go into our idiom section. It just melts in my mouth. When it comes to fruit, um, it melts in my mouth. That's a really good question because normally, even though it can be idiomatic, the idea of something melting is it's, it goes from hot or it goes from solid to liquid, or it goes from liquid to solid. It's normally about hot food, right? But no, I think we also say, you know, strawberries, they melt in your mouth. We talk about steak will melt in your mouth, um, or some cakes can melt. Yeah, I think you can. Yes, I'm going to say yes, confident yes. He just said avocado. We've had that great, lovely Mike, Mike, peppery. There's another one. Let's put the P in for peppery. Um, we've had salty. So in the same way, peppery. Um, peppery is the flavor of black pepper, right? So I don't know if anything is naturally peppery. My microphone is in the middle of my typing. It's in the wrong place. Never mind. Peppery, good, like it. And ah, oh, we finally got there. Albert, Alberti, Alberto. Spicy, that's the one I'm looking at. That's the other S. Spicy, like Thai red curry or Thai green curry. I think that should be a capital. Yes. Okay, excellent, guys. Some really, really, really nice. Um, some nice things here. <clears throat> I've just found this. Du, du, du. Pimenton from Eroski. This is paprika, basically, kind of. It's a spice. It makes things very, very spicy. Picad, I mean, that's a Spanish word, right? Picante. And then somebody asks, is it an English word? I think it comes from the French, piquant. And I think we do use it, piquant, Nessie says. We can use it in English. Um, I would tend to say spicy would be better. I would just say spicy, right? Okay, excellent. So those are all different, different flavors. So I've got a question for you guys. Um, and my question is, what is your favorite fruit? 
right? What is your favorite fruit? They do say fruit is very healthy and you should have lots of fruit, you know, over the week. In England, we say five a day, which is five pieces of fruit and vegetable every day. But I am curious, what is your favorite fruit? <clears throat> and I'm just going to, um, hmm, what am I going to do? I'm going to connect as here. Bear with me a moment because I'm just going to connect to a special software. <laughs> I always like new software. Um, and let's have a look at this one. We're going to do this one. What is your favorite fruit? So in the chat, if you just let me know what is your favorite fruit, and I'm going to connect us to this website. And here, all your answers are coming up like magic. Favourite fruits. Now, look at that. Mango is the clear winner at the moment. Banana, strawberry. And in fact, your uh, your suggestions are coming up on the screen. Banana from Minhas. Mangoes from Anik. Hisha says banana. Denise says oranges. Let's just see what comes up. A curry, avocado, raspberries. Raspberries was getting popular there for a moment. Wow, the suggestions are coming so fast. Apple is building up. Apple's getting bigger. Watermelon was getting bigger. But look at that. Banana's getting uh, more popular. It's interesting that mango is like the very, very top one. And coming in second and third, I can see strawberry, bananas, watermelon. Avocado seems to be up there. Is avocado a fruit, guys? I think it is. I think you're absolutely right. It is. What else is in there? Durian. Oh, man. I used to have durian when I was living in Malaysia. I was never a big fan of durian. I couldn't get over the smell. <laughs> Kiwi and pineapple seem to be popular as well. Look at that. Very, very interesting, right? Why is mango so popular? I guess because mango is succulent. It's juicy. Um, it has a sweet flavor. Quite difficult to eat, right? Mangoes, I mean, mangoes, you, you have to cut them in a strange way. And then you kind of cut, well, what I do, I cut them and then square them and fold the skin back. But I know you can you can peel them and chop them up. Mango and cheese, mwah, delicious. Very, very nice. Um, so that's interesting. I like this software. So a big shout out to streamalive.com. And they do not sponsor at all, but they very kindly let me use their software. And I'm just checking out how um, this word is, this word cloud is developing clearly. Oh, pomegranate as well is up there. Okay, nice. So interesting. So different. That's your favorite fruit. I was very, very curious about your favorite fruit. Um, I'm going to do another kind of thing with you now. Um, we're going to do guess the dish. So I'm going to show you a picture, okay, of a dish. And it's a blurred image. But slowly, I will reveal the image and show you the image. Um, so I want you to look carefully and again, in the chat, um, write down the name of the dish, what you think the dish is. OK, so let me show you. OK, let me show you, he says. <laughs> Come on, I just need to find it, right? Are you ready? OK, good. Anshu says, OK, we're ready. Good. Thank you, Anshu. Here it goes. So what is the dish?
Right, look at that. We've got Denise says steak. We've got also potato. Great. Somebody said apple. It wasn't apple. It was potatoes. There was garlic there. Fish. It could be a blackened fish, but it's maybe not chips and fish. Oh, that was a good idea because you saw the paper and the chips right at the start. Steak with fries. Lovely. I think you're there. Roasted. Keith. I hope that's not me. Ribs. Again, it could be. Um, this could be a ribeye steak, but it's not a ribeye steak. It's just a, a regular steak. Beef, absolutely. That's the name of the um, the meat beef steak. We often call it beef steak, but with a double E, my friend. Let me just help you there. Beef steak. Excellent. Excellent. I think everybody is there. duan has got it. Beef steak. Yorkshire pudding. That's a very, very good guess. It could have been. But actually, it's potatoes. Um, curry, again, it could be. There could be curry spice on there, but not quite. It is actually, it is a steak, right? Um, it's steak and chips or steak and fries. So different dishes. How do we talk about different dishes? Let's move on and talk about that. Hisha, well done. Thank you for that. So we can talk about describing different dishes like steak and chips right steak and chips or steak and fries we've got words like delicious um, tasty which i'm sure you know luscious which is a nice word luscious luscious it's a sh s l -sh -s -s. luscious so like delicious you've got a sh Delicious. Can you see? Delicious. You've also got luscious. Luscious just meaning that it's um, very, very tasty, right? Luscious. You can look up luscious and we'll just double check the meaning, but it's something that's quite strong but tasty. It has a pleasantly rich, sweet taste. Pleasantly rich and sweet. Okay, so let's call that rich so rich just means quite strong right rich and sweet mouth watering of course a few people mention that it it makes you know the saliva in your mouth come out makes your mouth water mouth watering um absolutely that's good um mouth watering is what you think it's going to taste like so this is before you taste it, right? In fact, these three are all before you taste it. This is what it looks like. It looks mouth-watering. It looks tempting. It looks appetizing. So that's a slightly different thing, right? This dish looks mouth-watering. How am I going to do this? I know what I'll do. I'll do that. No, I won't do that. I'll do that. This dish looks mouth-watering, um, tempting, because it's tempting you to eat it. Appetizing. Not to be confused with an appetizer. An appetizer is like a starter, like maybe a soup or some cold ham or some a salad that's an appetizer right in england we call it a starter appetizing appetizing is tempting it looks good and then we go back to taste it tastes da, 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 da. scrummy i mean scrummy is quite spoken english um it's informal but, you know, for IELTS speaking, that's great. It's informal. It's scrummy. Succulent. So succulent is, again, it's juicy, tasty. Juicy, juicy, um, tasty. We also say tender for meat. Tender, which equals soft, but for meat. So if, if you talk about a tender steak, it's soft. It's succulent, juicy, tasty, all of those. Succulent is a great, great word. 
And when you're talking about addition, you're with a friend, especially if you're with your mother-in-law, <laughs> then you need to say, oh, it's perfect. It's spot on. So describing the experience and the flavor, so you're eating away, you say, oh, it's spot on, mother-in-law, or it's perfect, father-in-law, if you, uh, if you <laughs> are being fed by your in-laws. Um, or your wife or husband or boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. It's spot on. It's perfect. Now, I've had a lot of students who mentioned this word to me, yummy. Yummy, unfortunately, um, it exists, but it's a word that children use, right? We don't normally say that as adults. If you say, oh, it's yummy, people think you're like six years old. It's a bit of an unusual word. I would say do not use yummy in IELTS. Um, I would leave that for your children to use yummy. <laughs> I think that's a better word, right? Yummy. Excellent. So all of these different ways to describe dishes like steak and chips, things like that. Um <laughs> I'm looking for other ideas that you've come up with. Okay, let me bear with you. What else have we got? How do we create big sintons? Huh. I'm not sure about that. Uh, right, some of you are saying, ah, succulent is a plant. Thought succulent is a plant. Right, Tanja. You're right, but yeah, botanically, succulent is a plant, but it's also an adjective. It's an adjective we use to describe food, to say it's tasty, um, it's nice, but well spotted. Yeah, well pointed out. Hamida says, I need to eat. <laughs> Me too. I'm going to have, I'm not going to have that because the juice goes everywhere. What else have we got? Um, on the money, it's on the money, it's perfect, it's on the money, it's spot on. Nice, Saeed, that's a nice expression as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> can, can, well, can we say scrum diddly umptious? Yes, you can. Again, that's something that children will say. Or if you say it to create humour, then yes. But in the IELTS speaking test, don't create that kind of humour. I wouldn't say that. With your family and friends, yes, grummy diddlyumptious is okay. <laughs> Golib says, out of this world. Yes, it's delish. Yep. So sometimes instead of saying delicious, we say it's delish. Absolutely. That's a great, very, very good point, right? Instead of delicious, you can say it's delish. I'm not sure how you spell it, but that looks fine to me. Good. Top notch as well, Monish says. Yeah, this food is top notch. Absolutely nice. Very, very good. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on, guys, from that. What's coming up next? We've been looking at vocabulary. Um, oh, there's a couple of extra words I just realized. <laughs> Other words to describe food. food. It's nutritious. It's, it's, no, it's nutritious. Um, so, uh, it's nutritious, it's healthy, or it's fatty. So, I guess nowadays, there is um, a lot of preoccupation with eating healthy food. And, of course, fruit, like my little dear mandarin, is very, very nutritious, right? Full of vitamin C. Um, steak and chips is nutritious, but... Steak can be fatty. Chips clearly are fatty because they're deep fried. Um, so maybe they're not that healthy. But, you know, I think, I mean, this is just me, okay? When it comes to eating food, I think there are moments to be healthy and there are moments to pig out <laughs> and just to enjoy the food. doesn't matter if it's fatty, if it's a bit unhealthy, if it's deep fried. Now and again... Just the enjoyment of the food is worth the unhealthiness of the food. Most of the time, of course, we, I, try to eat healthily, but not all the time. I mean, that would be so boring, right? Food, why do we eat? 
Hmm, I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Why do we eat food? Is it to be healthy? Hmm, for most people, actually, it probably isn't. But more about that in a moment. What's coming up next? That's what I wanted to find out. Let me go and ask Pooh Bear, because if in doubt, Pooh Bear has the answer. Food, vocabulary. So we've looked at vocabulary. Um, what's coming up next after vocabulary? Special occasions. Oh, balloons. Special occasions. Occasions. So by special occasions, what do I mean? Well, I'm talking, of course, about birthdays, about bar mitzvah, about anniversaries, um, about religious festivals, uh, weddings. What's the difference between anniversary and birthday? For some languages, it's the same, right? C'est mon anniversaire. It's my birthday. But in English, it's different. A birthday celebrates the day you were born. An anniversary celebrates some special event each year. So a wedding anniversary celebrates the number of years you've been married. Um, my promotion anniversary celebrates the number of years I've been promoted. You can have an anniversary for anything. Um, our engagement anniversary, when you first got engaged with your present wife, you could have an anniversary for that. There's all kinds of anniversaries, right? Um, so that's the difference, at least in English. OK, special occasions. What have we got? We've got a comment from Daniel. I'm going to share this because it's a lovely comment. Daniel, dear Keith, I got band eight in speaking. In the real test, all credit goes to you. Well, Danielle, all credit, not all credit. Of course, most of the credit goes to you. But I'm very, very pleased um, to hear that. Well done. That's great news. Lovely. Congratulations. You could have passing your IELTS test anniversary which means in a year's time from the day you took the test, you have an IELTS anniversary. <laughs> Danielle's like, no, no, I want to forget IELTS. <laughs> don't, I don't want to remember it every day. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> OK, so food on special occasions. Let's have a look. Good. I'm enjoying your expressions here that are coming up. So I've mentioned weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, of course, national holidays. Um, so in Spain, for example, you've got the Constitution Day. Um, of course, you've got you've got Christmas, you've got New Year. Christmas is a religious festival, but I guess many festivals are really uh, uh, many religious festivals. No. Many national festivals are religious festivals in many countries. Um, New Year's celebration, um, you've got Christmas, you've got all sorts of stuff, depending on the country where you live, right? Um, so let's look a little bit at some of the language and the food we might have on special occasions, um, generally speaking. Graduation, somebody's got. Yes, you could have a graduation as well. Um, who's that? Paproti. Well done. Yuna says. Paproti says graduation. Yuna says promotion. Yes. Thanksgiving, says Daphne. Yeah. So all of these are different times we can have. Now, you may have party food. So party food is generally, well, for many people, it's kind of for children. It's like sausage rolls, pizza, hamburger, but it can be for adults. But generally, we're talking about the usual stuff in, in, mm, in, let's say, in the UK. Party food tends to be sausage rolls, pizza, um, cakes and stuff like that. Right. Sausage rolls, pizza, cakes. It's all the really unhealthy stuff. Of course, of course, that's the whole point. <laughs> Finger food is small pieces of food that you eat with your fingers. So it's not a big curry. It's going to be things like sausage rolls, volavant, um, tapas in Spain, maybe a, a bit of um, maybe ham on a piece of bread, something like that. Um, open sandwiches, maybe. 
So an open sandwich is a sandwich, but instead of being two pieces of bread, you've got one piece of bread and it's an open sandwich. Um, open sandwiches, sausage rolls again, tapas. I know that's a Spanish word, but we do use that in English as well. We've stolen it from the Spanish. Um, what else? Crisps, maybe. Crisps being the British word. Um, chips would be the American word, right? Finger food, that kind of stuff. Stuff that is easy to pick up. Volavant is the other one, which must be a French word. But we use that in English. Volavants, 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 volavant. <laughs> okay, finger food, party food. Um, we can talk about also the national dish. So many countries have a national dish, which is the dish they're famous for. Some people say, you know, fish and chips is a national dish in the UK. I'm not sure about that, but just so you understand, mm -hmm. fish and chips in the UK. <laughs> Anybody in the UK was now going to be cursing me. Come on, Keith. But, you know, so you understand the idea. Right, you've got, thank you, we've got some more coming in. We've got, Buzz just says, adobo from the Philippines. Um, combo caption. <laughs> so, what does it mean, tappers? Okay, sorry, tappers. Um, tappers are small pieces of bread with something on top, like maybe a piece of cheese or a piece of ham or a piece of fish and they're very very small and you can eat them in one bite a bit like sushi but not sushi it's bread and something on top hmm okay now a we've got a more examples this is interesting this is what i wanted to know what your national dishes are sadza and meat in zimbabwe thank you tamuka um Pasupolet, chicken biryani could be a national dish, maybe. Great. In Italy, pasta. Yep, your lasagna that you talked about, Danielle, could be a national dish. Tom yam, I've heard of that one as well. Fish and curry in Bangladesh could be a national dish. Yep. Um, Idli dosa, nice in uh, South India. What else have we got? <laughs> mutton biryani. Mutton biryani. Yes, you could say mutton biryani. Lamb biryani, mutton biryani. Okay, we've got in Vietnam, Sophia says dried fruit. I think you're talking there about party food, right? Party food and finger food. Um, Pat Brotti says dumplings. Yeah, I think in some parts of... Um, well, in some parts of China, you may say dumplings are the national dish. Uh, Paprati, tell me where you're from. Let's find out. Uh, Bosch just says lumpia also from the Philippines. Haggis for Scotland. Yeah, he, she. You could say haggis is a national dish from Scotland. Bread for France. Well, bread for France. I, I'm not sure if the French would agree. La baguette, the big long French loaf, the French bread. Absolutely. I think, what's a national dish in France? Again, I'm going to offend a lot of French people, but I do remember Cocovin was extremely popular, but I'm not sure if it's a national dish. Anybody in France? Ah, Babafon. La foie au jambon. Great, there you go. That's in your area, right? In Bayonne. Fantastic, great. Valide, of course. I remember couscous as well in Algeria. Couscous, which is absolutely delicious. Um, normally it's kind of like a grain, right? With some vegetables and meat all cut together. Monish, maybe pizza would be the Italian national dish. And Daniela is going, no. <laughs> Apparently, tell me if it's true, Daniela, the pizza was created in America, that it was the Italians, the diaspora, the Italian diaspora who went to America, to the, to the United States, um, and they invented the pizza. Is that true? Or is that just an urban myth? I'm not sure. Bean An, you talk about pho. Of course, pho. I've had that. I had that in, in Hanoi. Absolutely lovely. Kind of a soup, right? 
and we've got plov as well. Listen, there are so many. I could spend the whole class going through national dishes. Absolutely fascinating. But let's move on from national dishes, right, to signature dish. So this is a great expression that you can use, actually. So a signature dish is a dish that the person is famous for. So let me say a dish. Oh, come on. A dish. It's hard to type with this mic. Let's move the microphone. <laughs> now you can't. Now you can't hear me. Um, a dish you like to make and are famous for. We've done national dish, signature dish. Um, signature dish. Whenever I cook for the family, right, I often make chili con carne. It's a South American dish, chili con carne. Um, and it's basically, it's mincemeat and red pinto, red beans, kidney beans. Excuse me. <laughs> it's the mandarin. Red kidney beans and a tomato sauce um, with rice. Like somebody from Brazil, I can't remember who said it in, in the beginning, rice and beans, right? It's very, it's a classic South American combination. Chili con carne is my signature dish. It's what I always make. It's what I do. You know, when I have to perform, we have friends coming around, Keith, make your chili con carne. Or sometimes, Keith, don't make your chili con carne, please. <clears throat> Quite spicy. It's nice. That's a signature dish. So you can talk about that. We're going to look at your signature dishes soon. Um, here's a nice expression. An old family favourite of mine. So a family favourite. Again, it's, it's a dish your family like. One that you often make or somebody in the family makes, but all the family enjoy, right? An old family favourite of mine is dumplings. Um, an old family fa an old family favourite of mine is um, lasagna. Love it. So these are dishes that your family like to make. You could talk about a classic, you know, and a classic is just something very traditional, very typical. Right. Very typical. A classic for birthdays is birthday cake. A classic for birthdays in the UK is steak and chips. Maybe. Right. Um, a classic for birthdays, my wife tells me, uh, in China is noodles. That on your birthday, you must have noodles because it represents a long life. You're going to have the, uh, what do they call it? The chong, chong shou. Is that right? Long life. So noodles is a, a classic for birthdays in that country. OK, so some nice expressions there you can be using. Well, I'm getting all these stuff. This is so interesting. Sushi in Japan. We're going back to national dishes. Kebab in Iran. Pizza in Naples. Some dishes, right, are regional, right? Um, Sumalak. And give us the country as well. Cuisse de Grenouille, <laughs> frog's legs, of course, of course. Suchi Satai, Satai, is that Thailand? An Indonesia, maybe? Um, borscht and salo in the Ukraine. I know borscht is very popular in Russia as well. Korean barbecue, kimchi, right? All of this stuff. Great, so interesting. Um, I would love to go on. Croquetos is Spain. That's right. But let me um, let me move us briefly on. We love food, don't we? These expressions, more expressions, right, we can talk about. Here are some very, very simple templates. We can say, whoa, right? Um, we can say, on birthdays or anniversaries, we tend to eat blah, 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 blah. Uh, at weddings... At Christmas or at Easter, we tend to eat, or we often eat, or we typically eat. That's nice, right? We typically eat blah, blah, blah. Now, on birthdays, because it's on a particular day. So on my birthday, or on birthdays, generally speaking, so we put the S, on anniversaries. However, 
Weddings, we say at. Don't ask me why. There's no logic to it. Well, there's a bit of logic, but there's no rule. At weddings, at Christmas, at Easter. When you give the name of the holiday, um, often it's at. If you're not sure, then you can use for, for everything, right? <laughs> so if you're not sure, use for. Not sh sure about the preposition, then just use for, because for is going to be fine, right? Um, for Christmas, for birthdays, for weddings, for Easter, for Ramadan, for this, we tend to eat. So you can learn on or at, but for is just much easier, right? We tend to eat, blah, blah, blah. We typically eat. So these are nice adverbs you can be using as well, as well, right? We tend to eat. Um, we often eat sushi. We typically eat uh, biryani. Uh, we tend to eat cakes or whatever it may be, right? So that's a nice trick. Just use four and then you can have this uh, thing here. And then, of course, you can add whatever it is that you eat. I mean, I've put in a few ideas, roast lamb, grilled lobster, barbecued pork, fried vegetables. Uh, and you guys, of course, have got all, all the ideas, right? Excellent. So, for example, Tamuka says at, <laughs> at weeding. Here again, because we're talking about all of the weddings, generally speaking, not a particular wedding. Can you guess what I'm going to say, Tamuka? Can you guess? Because at weddings, right? At weddings, because it's generally speaking, at weddings, we often eat rice and steak in Zimbabwe. Absolutely fantastic. Great. Good. Oh, yes. Esther Arisa, thank you for that. Let's bring this in because she's explaining tapas. It's not just bread. It could be small dishes or something like croquetas, right? Something like that. Very, very good point. Thank you for that. Great. Um, so, migoreng. So, we could say on special occasions or for special occasions in Indonesia, we typically eat migoreng, right? Now, what may often happen, and I guess this is quite important, is if the name of the dish is not very common and not an English name, you probably want to explain what it is because the examiner may not know um, if they're not from your country. So you may say, you know, in Indonesia, for special occasions, we typically eat migoren, uh, which is a kind of soup or it's a kind of... Um, dish with rice and blah, 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 and explain a bit. Two reasons. One, it improves communication, makes it clear to the examiner. Two, you have a chance to show off more language, right? It's a dish which consists of steamed blah, 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 and blah, 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 right? It's a dish which consists of, you can show off a wider range of vocabulary, maybe grammar as well. So it's a good idea um, to explain the dish if it's not familiar. If you say, you know, at weddings in Japan, we tend to eat sushi, you probably don't need to explain sushi because most people will know the, what sushi is, right? Um, and there's a danger you could sound patronizing to the examiner, right? Like her, you don't know, stupid. So sushi is a dish which consists of rice. And probably not necessary. <laughs> okay, right, good. I put some ideas here. Let me add that then as, as an example. Um, we typically eat, which is a local dish which consists of 
You know, you could just say something very, very simple like that. I, if I have I spelled Migoren correctly, I've lost it now. Oh well, I hope so. Okay, excellent. Uh, Avik Son says, at weddings we tend to eat pilaf. Lovely, great, great. Daphne says, on special days we often tend to eat beef. We often tend to eat, eat often and tend to is actually the same thing. I don't think you need to repeat it. Um, it's kind of repeating the same thing. I would just use one, Daphne, right? On special days, we tend to eat beef. Okay. <clears throat> Azra says, today is my husband's birthday. Where are you? And I prepared scrumptious biryani with kebab along with a dessert called halwa. We tend to eat all these. Absolutely brilliant. Very, very nice. Good. Clara says, we tend to eat anything sweet during birthday parties. During works here. That's great as well. Okay. Very, very nice. Good. Mary says, at weddings. Oh, at weedings. Why is everybody writing weedings? That's very strange. You're not the first, Mary, don't worry. <laughs> at weddings in East Africa, we typically eat rice and beef. Sounds nice. Stefano says at Easter, we tend to eat chocolate because it's so healthy. <laughs> Brilliant. Good. Okay. So let me take us off there. Nice. Very, very interesting finding about, about all your food. Um, I'm going to show you a very briefly, a couple of things. I'm going to show you a website, first of all. Um, this website is, it's called Better Health. I can show you here, actually. Betterhealth.vic.gov. I'm going to ask um, oops, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah, if you could share this, if you're still in the, um, the YouTube room, um, share this with the guys, and I'll show you the website. Let me show you over here. Yeah, it's over here. It's on the website. And I'll see if I can um, share this with the, the guys in Facebook. Our moderator is off at the moment in Facebook. Unfortunately. Oh, I didn't realize you were watching. <laughs> Wait a moment. Um, let me come and just see if I can add this for the guys watching in Facebook. This is a link. So I do like now and again to share links with you that may be interesting. Um, they may be relevant. They can give you lots of vocabulary as well as ideas to talk about food. This particular link, right, is just one that goes and shows you different national dishes. Sorry, different dishes for special occasions around the world. It's quite interesting. Um I think, I mean, I'm going to show you very, very briefly over here. Food and celebrations on this page. So it talks about Christmas, New Year, Lunar New Year, weddings, birthdays, etc. And what it does is it tells you about different countries, right? Um, for example, France has black and white pudding, which is a sausage containing blood. Is that the andouille, maybe? Germany, gingerbread biscuits. Russia, a feast of 12 different dishes representing Christ's disciples. New Year in Greece, a special sweet pasty baked with a coin inside it. Spain has 12 grapes meant to be put in the mouth. Lunar New Year, very common, obviously, in China, Korea, Vietnam and other countries. Um, China has fish. Korea has dumpling soup. And so on and so forth. It's quite interesting. You can go and have a look in your own time at some of the dishes and how they are talked about. So the kind of language that is used to describe these dis dishes. Okay, um, It's nice. I think it's a nice website. I think it gives a lovely language and an interesting insight to the diversity of food for celebrations in different countries. Very nice. Okay. So, what's next? I know, that's what, blah, 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 I know I need a drink. That's what's next. Bum, bum, bum. 
the cardamom has just started to take effect. Hmm, quite spi not spicy, pungent, I would say. Hmm. Okay. Signature dishes. We were talking about signature dishes, right? Some that you make. I, yesterday, actually went into the Facebook group. Oh, and if you're not in there, guys, go and join. Go and go to the go to Facebook and search for um, Keith Mastermind IELTS speaking. Um, come and join the Facebook group. Yesterday, I posted a post. It was a question about what is your signature dish? Because I was interested to know what people are making. I'd like to share with you some of the comments and see what people said. Let's find out what different signature dishes are in different parts of the world. Let's watch this together. Today, I asked you, what is your signature dish? That means the dish that you are really good at and you're famous for. I mean, everybody knows you're good at it and you love to make it. So what did people say? Well, interestingly, let's find out. Um, <clears throat> we've got, first of all, from Medinat, the Nigerian jollot rice. Sounds delicious. Uh, we've got Huda says, it's a dessert, actually. I'm good at making tarts, fruit tarts. And look at this. Oh, my. Oh, my. That looks absolutely delicious. <laughs> Lovely. Um, Stefan says, pasta with butter. Simple but tasty. Catherine says, carry, carry. It's a Filipino dish. Usually it's made from oxtail, oxtail or beef belly. Wow. Sautéed in peanut butter. Lovely. Garnished with some vegetables. That's lovely English. Garnished with, kind of decorated with. Very, very nice. Lovely. Daniela says, Lasagna al forno. Actually, that is one of my favourite dishes, Daniela. We've also got Ma Majla who says carrot cake. Many kinds of cheesecakes. In fact, all kinds of Bosnian pies. And we're looking at sweet pies. I mean, if you can see that, that looks so, so nice. Love it. <clears throat> We've also got uh, Tanja says, well, if I had to choose one of my favourite signature dishes... You're obviously a good cook. I'd go for the red Thai curry. Lovely. With jasmine rice. I do like curry. Um, we've got another one from Cameroon who says mixed vegetable curry. Lovely. Very nice. George says deep fried water. Now, George, you're either <laughs> on a diet or you can't cook. Ha <laughs> ha. Pudding would be the uh, signature dish of Casal. Louise from Brazil says... The most popular is rice with beans. Right. Very, very nice. Uh, roti and uh, beef curry from Mohammed. Agdul says um, besh parmak, which is the Kazakh national dish. Sounds very interesting, actually. Uh, Aminat says, I'm good at cooking. It doesn't matter. Meals or sweets. But the one thing everyone praises is lentil soup. I'm also a big fan of lentils. And Ayash. I would say my signature dish is red rice with pol sambol, spicy chicken curry, along with papadam. Wow, I love papadams. I love curry. So listen, guys, thank you so much for those lovely, lovely ideas. Very nice ideas. Lovely, some lovely language. So if you go into the Facebook group, check out some of the answers and comments. You get, pick up some really nice language. I noticed a few people are vegetarians, right? And we've talked a lot about meat. But of course, I mean, vegetarian dishes are just as delicious. Um, and when we talk about curry, of course, you can have vegetarian curry. You can have vegetarian biryani, um, all sort of vegetarian pizza. I mean, we have a spinach pizza. One of our family favorites is a spinach pizza. Sounds strange, but it's absolutely delicious, luscious even to say so yeah absolutely very very good point now then um so signature dishes often the dishes that we well we make because we like we may have those on special occasions as well um i'm gonna just add a few expressions um related to food on special occasions and these are quite useful because very often 
on special occasions. Um, we buy expensive ingredients, right? Because on special occasions, you may want the best steak. You may want the best fish. You may want the best seafood. So you may be spending a lot of money on expensive ingredients. Ingredients, of course, are the substances that make up the dish. The ingredients of lasagna are going to be pasta, bechamel sauce, maybe meat, maybe vegetables, tomato, um, things like that. A couple of expressions, a few expressions. We fork out or we forked out more than we should. Let me put it in the past. To fork out is to spend a lot of money, um, to spend maybe too much money. It's very informal, but it's a very nice expression you can use. We forked out um, more than we should. And this, of course, is typically used with weddings, right? You're describing the wedding. And if you're the person getting married or it was your wedding or your family's wedding, yeah, it was great. We had all of this. We had champagne. We had the best food. We got the best ingredients, but we forked out more than we should, more than we should have even. So to fork out is a nice expression. To fork out um, is to spend a lot of money on something. And normally, not always, we forked out more than we should on food to fork out on something i forked out a lot of money on food i forked out i don't know 20 pounds on this dinner i forked out joked out no forked out stop correcting me <laughs> i forked out 20 dollars on this dinner now, maybe 20. Depends what country you're living in, but let's put 50. I mean, that really is a lot, right? $50 on a dinner. I forked out $50 on this dinner. So it's to fork out money or a quantity on and put in the on there as well. Okay. Um, another one here, to pay over the odds. To pay over the odds is to pay too much. So we paid over the odds for that meal. And this typically happens, you know, if you take somebody out for dinner um, in the centre of town, in the most expensive restaurant, then of course you're going to pay over the odds. If you go to a small restaurant eh, that nobody knows about in a very cheap area, It'll be cheap. But if you go to the town centre, you're likely going to pay over the odds for that meal. So we paid over the odds for something, right? Usually for. That's the, the preposition you would put in there. We paid over the odds. Similarly, we can say we spend a fortune on pricey beverages. Let's put it in the in the past. So to spend a fortune on something is, again, to spend a lot of money on something, of course. To spend a fortune on. Look out for the prepositions because th these are the things that will kill you. <laughs> Not literally, but they will, where the mistakes come is a preposition. We spent a fortune on pricey drinks or pricey beverages, right? Um, so to pay too much, yes. Um, as Layla says, Layla, the artist, I forked out more than we should for my nephew's birthday. Exactly, yes. Alfredo, pay through the nose, yes. Yeah, let's add that because I like that expression. We paid through the nose. for it. Alfredo, great. I'm just going to take your nice face off so I can show here. Paid 
through the nose. Paid through the nose, excuse me. Why do you pay through the nose? I don't know where that comes from. That is so strange, but it's true to pay too much, right? To pay through the mo through the nose. Um, I'm paying over the odds for the wedding. Very nice, Nessie. Very, very good. Yes. So to pay over the odds, to pay too much. Good. Um, now, Bosja, studying abroad is expensive. So paying over the odds is not the synonym of expensive. Um, what you need to say is studying when we study abroad... When we, let's try and get you here, if I can get you done. When we study abroad, we pay over the odds. Right? Because it, although it means paying too much, it's not really a synonym of expensive. So you need to change it around. When we study abroad, we pay over the odds. Exactly. Yeah, it's very, very expensive, right? Um, nice. Great, great example, Bosje. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's really good. What else have we got? Um, Lydia says, cooking is one of my favorite hobbies. Okay. Any others practicing? <laughs> Pooja. I fork out so much on the IELTS exam and the course. Pooja. Yes, I know. It's not cheap, right? Raja says, I forked out 10,000 won on Starbucks Brewery. Did you buy the brewery or did you buy a drink? I'm interested. Maybe you bought the whole brewery. Interested. Paprotti says, my colleague paid over the odds for a dinner in Provence recently. Ah, right. So I'm guessing you're from France then, Paprotti. I'm guessing. Um, Stacy says, I can't spend a fortune on food, even for special occasions, because I don't have much money. I was going to say nice, nice English. It's not nice that you don't have much money, but it's nice English, right? <laughs> uh, Julia, this is a nice one. Buying expensive ingredients bleeds me dry more often than not. Yeah, good. So it bleeds me dry. You know, it leaves you without anything because it's so expensive. It's a nice expression. Very, very nice. Lovely. Okay. Lovely. Some nice expressions there. Thank you very much for sharing all of those. Let's see what's coming up next, because we've talked about special occasions. What's next? Eating habits. The lady with the crisps. <laughs> Outrageous, right? Eating habits. Okay. So, um, I've got, go away, please. I feel like she's pulling crisps on my floor here. <laughs> Looking for the crisps. Okay, eating habits. Um, I have a question for you guys. Where do you usually eat lunch? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to that funny software. I say funny, interesting software. Um, here we go. I'm going to put this on the screen and ask you, um, where do you usually eat lunch? I want you to choose one of the answers here. Let me show this to you, right? Here are the choices. Where do you usually eat lunch? One, in front of a computer. Two, at home alone. Three, at home with family. Four, I go out for lunch. Five, in a work canteen. Six, I don't have lunch. You can put the number or the answer. Now I can see a lot of you are giving your comments, but if you can, that's it. If you put the number or the exact phrase, it will show up in the screen here. Let's see what we've got. Eating habits. I wonder if you have good eating habits, you guys. At the moment, we've got 50% at home with family, but I'm sure that will change in a moment. <laughs> Let's see. Oops, hang on. What happened there? 
Come on, Keith, sort it out. Bear with me. I'll get it back. I will get it back. Here it is. OK. <clears throat> In front of a computer, only 10%. At home alone, about a quarter of the people. And it seems that just over half of the people eat at home with family. Um, very, very, in fact, absolutely nobody goes out for lunch at a restaurant. But we do have a small number of people who eat in a work canteen. Um, and a few who don't have lunch. I know a few people who just don't have lunch for different reasons, right? I'll give you a couple of seconds while I just uh, put on some music and finish my mandarin. can hear me munching away the results haven't changed very much that is very very interesting right so it seems like around half of the people get a chance to have lunch at home with the family which i would say is a very very good eating habit i think that's a great thing to do hadil says when i was back in my country i used to have lunch between 2 p.m and 3 p.m when i moved to study in bangladesh we have lunch between 11 30 and 2 which leaves me hungry the rest of the day because it's too early, right? I appreciate that. I had a similar experience um, when I moved. Gosh, uh, it wasn't to do with culture. It was to do with work. When I moved from one job to another and we had lunch much later and I was getting so hungry at like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock because lunch was always much later. Anyway, eating habits. Let's talk about it. So we can talk about binge eating now binge eating is probably not a good eating habit um binge eating is that it means that you eat lots of food in one go and often cannot stop so some people for example um will binge eat well do you remember the girl <laughs> with the crisps right the girl with the crisps over here she is binge eating and she's eating the, she's snacking or eating the crisps. I mean, that's binge eating. She's eating too much, too quickly in one go. Probably not a good idea. Um, some people like to pig out and eat a lot in the evening, but then they don't eat in the, in the day. In extreme cases, this is a medical condition. Um, it can be if you eat too much. So we can say binge eating. You can also say binge drinking when you drink often too much alcohol in a short time. Um, I'm a binge eater. So maybe, for example, you're watching TV and you eat a whole tub of ice cream in about 10 minutes. You can say I'm guilty of binge eating, right? Like you, the judge is sentencing you to jail, the health jail. I'm guilty of binge eating. Now, talking of medical conditions, um, I'll just mention, obviously, the expression an eating disorder. We say to have an eating disorder. And this can be anything from, well, bulimia to anorexia. There are different eating disorders. I'm not going to go much into it, but just to say as an expression, it's, uh, it's useful to know eating disorder. I know in many languages they have different ways of expressing that. It's where it, it's a medical condition, right? E.g. an... I don't know how you spell anorexia. I'll have to check. I think that's right. I'm just going to double check because I'm not 100% sure that's the right spelling. It's one of those strange kind of Latin medical names, isn't it? 
anorexia. It was right. Yes. Okay. Good. So related to that, other eating habits, snacking, eating snacks, um, comfort eating is, again, it's eating to feel good. E.g., you know, chocolate cake. <laughs> So we often talk about comfort eating when people are going through a difficult time, they're feeling sad, they're feeling maybe depressed, maybe you know you've gone you've failed your IELTS test. God forbid you failed your IELTS test and you go home really fed up and you just eat a big cake. Comfort eating. Or maybe, you know, not just failing tests, I mean going through a divorce, a separation, a breakup, something bad happening comfort eating is often what people resort to. We have these other expressions about being a fussy eater or a picky eater, which means they only eat the food they like and they won't try new foods. Uh, my child is a fussy eater. Typically, we talk about children, right? Children who, do, who will not eat their vegetables. <laughs> we say they're a picky eater or a fussy eater. Fussy means I want that, I don't want that. Uh, I, I, I must have that, I'm not going to have that. It's very difficult to make them happy um, because they're so fussy or picky. So those are other expressions you may use. Can be used for your um, partners. I mean, not only children. Uh, some people say, you know, my partner is a fussy eater. You can also say that. Okay, great. So comfort eating, Pap says it's kind of stress eating. Yeah, it is kind of stress eating. The common collocation is comfort eating. <clears throat> Stacy says, I become a binge eater when I'm having ice cream. Very, very good. Excellent. That's exactly it. Yes. So binge eating is overeating. Yes, that's exactly it. Nice. Good. Okay. Um, other habits, right? Eating habits. Some people go on a diet. Yeah, diets, good or bad. <clears throat> Some people love diets and they lose weight and they find it very beneficial. A lot of people say diets are very bad because they're restricting your nutrition and they're not good for us um, physically or psychologically. But maybe you've been on a diet. I don't know. The expression is to go on a diet, which is where you restrict some kind of food, right? You restrict some food. Autocorrect, come on, restrict some food. So if you cannot eat uh, carbohydrates, you're on a low carb diet, mm, kind of. If you don't eat any fat, you're on a low fat diet or you eat very little fat. Different kinds of diets, right? Um, so we can say I've been on a low carb diet for a few months or I follow the keto diet. The keto, well, you can Google it and find out about the keto diet. I follow the keto diet. I follow the Mediterranean diet. They do say it's the best in the world, apparently. You can also say, I'm a vegetarian if you don't eat meat. Or I'm a vegan, a vegan. I've been a vegan for years now. Notice the pronunciation. You've got the vegetarian, vegetarian, and vegan. Make sure the the is quite strong, vegan. I've been a vegan for years. It's not true, by the way. I don't follow any diet at all. Um, I just eat in moderation, all things. Okay, so let's see. I'm sure we've got some vegetarians here. Um, Pooja says, I'm a vegetarian. Uh, the keto diet is pretty hard. Everyone should. I totally agree. I think it's almost dangerous on, to some points, right? Um, 
Okay, good. Astra says, nowadays, children are picky eaters. Well, depends on the children, but maybe it is a more of a trend nowadays. Nowadays is one word, Astra. Great. Uh, here we've got... How do I pronounce your name? Conseil <laughs> Regional. I'm on a diet, so I follow the Mediterranean diet and I skip the dinner. You skip dinner. That's interesting. You're on a Mediterranean diet and you skip dinner. Not the dinner, but dinner. Skip dinner. I'm on a diet. I'll just help you out with your letters here. Okay, great. <laughs> Pradeep says, I tend to follow the Mediterranean diet, which gives me keep fit and healthy. That's interesting. Um, I tend to follow... So I'm going to put the because it's a specific diet, the Mediterranean diet, um, which instead of gives me, you don't actually need that here because you've got automatically keeps me. It keeps me fit and healthy. I forgot the me. Yeah, that's it, Pradeep. Excellent. I tend to follow med the Mediterranean diet, which keeps me fit and healthy. Good. Okay, excellent. So different expressions around diet. And I'm going to add, oh, yes, the cheat day. Oh, so this was in the answer to the answer of this question. Have you ever been on a diet? Yes, but not always. I like to have a cheat day once a week. A cheat day, if you're familiar with the expression, is a day when you break the diet and you eat whatever you want. Kind of you're cheating. You're not following the diet. You maybe just have all the things that you can't have on the other days. So these are eating habits, right? Diets are a kind of eating habit. Good. I'm going to stop for a moment and see eating habits. Not eating habits. Keith in the kitchen. Okay, let's move away from eating habits. I'm going to show you a short video, right? Um, Keith in the kitchen. It's not me in the kitchen, but it's something to do with me in the kitchen. And I just want to share with you, yes, this. Uh -huh. Where are we? I'm going to show you a question first because this question is quite important. Um, this is a question I've heard a few students talk about recently. Um, and so I'm going to share it with you. It says, why do some people like to get everyone around the table at mealtimes? And this is such a common question, actually, in different cultures. It's to do with eating habits, right? I mean, do you eat together with the family? Do you remember in the the uh, the poll that we did, right, about eating with the family? You guys said at home with the family. 50% of you eat at home with the family. Why is it some people like to get the family around the table at mealtimes? In some cultures, it's not very important. People just eat at their desk at work on their own, right? It really, it really does depend um, on the culture or the mindset of the people. With that in mind, I want you to watch a very, very short video. I'll just put these questions up together and see if you can answer these questions. And the first question is, who likes to get people around the table to eat? And the second question is, why? Very easy questions, right? Who likes to get people around the table to eat and why? Let's watch this short video, very short, with me, connected to the kitchen, <laughs> very close to the kitchen. Um, and let's find out, okay? Who likes to get people around the table and why? You can write your answers in the chat box as we go along. Okie dokie, let's do it. Whoops, here we go. 
Aha. I just got to find it. It's disappeared. <laughs> so, hello. Why do some people like to get everyone together at meal times? My mother was a great one for getting the family together at dinner time. I think she saw it as a, a socialising event, right? It's a great opportunity to catch up with friends and family, um, to sit down and have a good chin wag and find out what everybody's doing. I think some cultures do see eating as a social event, getting people together, chatting and enjoying the food with others. There are other cultures where eating um, is just stuffing your face filling up as quickly as possible or just getting some nutrition and boom getting out of there as quick as you possibly can so i guess it's different course you know different courses for different horses so to speak for me i do enjoy a good sit down and a good chat with friends over a nice meal back to the cooking bye bye Uh, bring my uh, microphone back. So, there you go. There was the, uh, that was me close to the kitchen, just coming out of the kitchen. So the question, based on the video, who likes to get people around the table to eat and why? Well, interesting questions. Okay, I'm going to go straight in with Nessie, who says, your mother this is the right answer. To socialise, absolutely. In a nutshell, that was the answer. Exactly. Good. Um, let's look at some other things that you've said related to this. Parents tend to sit around the table with family because it gives them a feeling of being like a team. That's nice. I like that. Yes. Pooja says it's an Indian culture to eat together. The family who eats together stays together happily. That's very true. Who said that? That comes, that rings a bell. The family that eats together stays together. There was that. I saw that in a film. Oh, somebody remind me. Fatima says, my mum is the one who wants everyone around the table because she's the one who does the cooking. And she wants to see how we feel about the food. She enjoys it when she sees we enjoyed it. Lovely. That is really nice English and really well written. Uh, I'll just add who. She is the one who does the cooking. I like that. Very, very nice. Thank you very much, Fatima. Ingrid, it brings us together. Very, very true. Pradip, catch up on old times. Passing quality time, spending quality time together, stuffing your face. Yes. Yuna says, Keith's mother, build strong family bonds. All of that is very, very true. Yes. <laughs> Tanja, you cynic. Family gather together and stare at their mobile phones. <laughs> yes. Well, listen, if you've got teenagers in the family, that is most probably true. <laughs> uh, right. Family gather. Family. This is interesting, Tanya, because I was wondering, family gathers or family gather? And of course, family is one of those unusual nouns that can be singular or plural. So you can say the family gather or the family gathers. You can use both. It's a bit like team, family. The both of those can be used. I like your cynicism. Great. Bosia said the mother because she considered it to be a socialising event. Olivia, parents because it helps to instill a spirit of togetherness among family members. I do like that. A spirit of togetherness. Nice English. I love that. Very, very good. Family members and friends. Yes, um, different courses for different horses. Yes, Fabio, that is correct. Almost correct. I'll show you in a moment that expression. We'll look at that together. Yes. With parents so we can spend time together. Excellent. So, so just some of the expressions that came out of that video, right, that are quite useful. Um, 
So I said that my mother sees the dinner as a socializing event. You could say a social event or a socializing event. Um, because it's a chance to catch up with others. So you can also say it's it's a chance to blah, 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 right? It's an opportunity to. It's a chance to catch up with others, have a chin wag. So somebody mentioned a chit chat. It's also possible. Um, it's basically a a conversation, right? Have a chin wag. That's a very British. If you saw my video about British English, you may remember. I think chin wag was in there. It's a very British expression. Have a chin wag. I'll just make that clear. I'm not sure if Americans will understand that. So maybe don't use chin wag in IELTS because it's too slang. But chit chat, yes. Conversation, yes. Um, for some people, eating is stuffing your face. <laughs> to stuff your face, right? Um, to pig out is the other expression we've had. It's different courses for different horses. So this is this expression means um, different people like different things. Some people like to eat with the family. Some people like to just eat quickly on their own and move on, right? Different people like different things. People like different things. Great. Okay. Nice. Whoops. So, yeah, some interesting expressions, right? Some nice expressions you could be using there um, around that idea of getting people around the table. Great. Very, very, very nice. Good. I need a drink again. <laughs> Bear with me. And you probably need a moment to breathe, I'm guessing. I've nearly finished the Mandarin. Every time I show you a video, I secretly pig out on my Mandarin. <clears throat> Excellent. Good. So what's next, Keith? Um, I'm just keeping an eye on the clock. We've probably got another 10 minutes or 15 minutes left. Um, so we've done Keith in the kitchen. We're going to have a look at idioms and then we're going to have a game of Kahoot and then we'll finish up. So idioms like the proof is in the pudding. What on earth? Does that mean the proof is in the pudding? Um, well, let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. The proof is in the pudding. Come with me. Idioms. To talk about food. So the proof is in the pudding, right? This expression means that you can only know if something is good by living it or experiencing it or maybe testing testing it. <clears throat> um, so you may say, well, okay, here's a plum. Let me uh, make me bigger. <laughs> here's a plum. I wonder, is it sweet or sour? And you may say, well, I don't know. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Meaning you have to eat it to find out if it's good or not. Um, the proof is in the pudding. I'm thinking about taking a new job. Um, I saw an advertisement, but I don't know if it's a good job. And my friend says, yeah, well, Keith, the proof is in the pudding. If you, you can only find out by taking the job and doing it, right? I mean, you can listen to advice, but the proof is in the pudding. So it's a nice expression. Um, you can only know something if it's good by tasting it. Okay, to pick out on something that a few of you have mentioned. I think I made a video in my Facebook group with this one. To pig out on is to eat too much of something. Um, so sometimes if I'm fed up and bored, I will do some comfort eating and I will pig out on crisps. Seriously, I, I will have a whole packet of crisps to myself and probably a whole tub of chocolate ice cream. I love 
chocolate ice cream. Um, not every day, obviously, eating in moderation, but I will happily pig out on a whole tub of chocolate ice cream. We've got the expression to have a sweet tooth, to have a sweet tooth. And that basically means that you are somebody who likes sweet things, right? Um, not only sweet, but maybe in, in, in savoury food, you like it to be sweet. So you like peppers and carrots and things that have a sweet flavour. Um, but generally speaking, you know, if you if you eat a lot of chocolate, you probably have a sweet tooth. Uh, the other one that somebody actually mentioned earlier, right? Somebody was asking about it melts in the mouth to melt. Actually, I'll say it melts in the mouth would be more useful. Um, oh, and I would say you can talk about hot food, fruit, cakes. I think just about anything, to be honest. It melts in the mouth. Um strawberries melt in the mouth this chocolate is so nice it melts in the mouth um that vegetable lasagna you made oh it was so lovely it just melts in the mouth it's delicious right nice expressions and the last one is this one it's the greatest thing since sliced bread now I'm not sure if this is a British one. It might be. It's the greatest thing since sliced sliced bread. You can use this, obviously, not just to talk about food, but to talk about anything. Um, you could say, you could talk about food. So you could say Keith's lasagna is the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> Maybe. Probably Daniela's lasagna is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um or you could talk about anything. Um, this job is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I love this job. You could use it more widely. Yeah. Just meaning it's the best thing ever. Sliced bread. I mean, it's a great invention. Before then, we were breaking up bread. And then when we can slice bread, it means we can make sandwiches. We can make some tappers. We can do all sorts of stuff. So some people think sliced bread is a great invention. On reflection... It's not quite true, is it? On reflection, sliced bread is processed, not as healthy, probably not as good, but it's quite sweet. Some people like it <laughs> and it's very, very practical. Especially in Britain, we have this, right? The greatest thing since sliced bread. Now, these are all idioms about food. I wonder if you've got any others. <laughs> Mohammed, you didn't know that I was English? Really? With my pronunciation? I'm surprised. But you said crisps and you got it exactly because in America, they don't say crisps, right? They would say chips, I think. Yeah, interesting, Mohammed. Good. I'm glad that that's clear. Sophie says, I have a sweet tooth. After eating a main meal, I try to find a piece of cake to enjoy. Right. Oh, Anshu, I eat like a horse after school. Brilliant. Let's add that to the uh, the list. I eat like a horse is to eat a lot. Oh, microphone, go away. Come back. Anshu, thank you for that. I'll just take your you and your lovely avatar away. Um, I eat like a horse to eat a lot and quickly. Great, nice. <laughs> hey, Dante, welcome. First time here. Good. Clara says, just know which side of your bread is buttered on. Which side is your bread buttered on right just know which side your bread is buttered on without the of that was it know which side your bread yeah which is to know oh it's to know <clears throat> which side you should choose um should you support this person or that person um you know it's a bit like don't bite the hand that feeds you is the other expression so 
if you're working for a company that pays you very well, people say, just know which side your bread is buttered on. Make sure you take care of the company. Don't criticise the company. Otherwise, you'll bite the hand that feeds you. I don't agree, but yes, the expression's there. Yes, great. A lemon is a problem, Maria? Oh, you're talking about the lemon. I think you're talking about cars, right? When you buy a second-hand car, it's a lemon. So it's a problematic car that has lots of problems. I think we only use that for cars, though. Grace says, that <laughs> Grace found me, body. This lesson is the greatest since sliced bread. Lovely. You can come again. <laughs> It's no use crying over spilt milk. Yep, good expression around milk that, you know, if something's done, you can't do anything now. It's in the past. Move forward. Okay. Um, Giot says, I eat like a horse after my fasting. Bite off more than you can chew is to, yep, to do too much of something that you can't then do it. Um you know, if you're going to maybe start a painting and you try and do this massive painting and realise it's too big, you'll never finish it. You've bitten off more than you can chew. Piece of cake, meaning very, very easy. It's a piece of cake. It's really easy. Yeah, very, very nice. So you've got all of those. Lots of, there's a few others coming up. Now, I'm just going to mention, um, so there's a difference between a lot of these expressions which are with food, right? It's a piece of cake. You're not talking about food. It's an expression with food, right? Bite off more than you can chew. It's an expression related to food, but it's not something you'd use to talk about food. The expressions we've got here are talking about food. There are... Ugh, tens of expressions that use food, right? And if you want to find out about those, I do recommend this link. Many of you already know those expressions. I can see from what you're saying, uh, you're sharing lots of really good idioms. But if you want to go and have a look at um, this link, I'll just show you briefly. Um, it's one of the best websites for food idioms that I've found. Um, 81 of them, right? <clears throat> I like it because it, it categorizes them. So related to sweet and sour. As busy as popcorn on a skillet. That's so American. As flat as a pancake. As sour as vinegar. Uh, the salt of the earth. And, and then there's more and more fruit and veg. The apple of his eye. To buy a lemon. Oh, to buy something worthless. It's interesting. In England, that tends to be cars, but maybe in America, yes, it can be for a wider use of different things. Um, there's lots of expressions here about desserts as well, right? As easy as pie. Have Wong's cake and eat it. Absolutely great expressions. And I also like the fact that there's not only an explanation, but there's an example. So you have the expression, you've got the explanation... And then you've got an example below. So it's nice. Go and check it out, right? Um, I think it's useful. I will just add that to the Facebook group as well. <laughs> people are getting hungry. I realise people are getting hungry. Um, okay, so we've been, wow. What are we going to do? Well, I'm going to finish up. I'm going to finish up on a very quick game of Kahoot to help you revise some of the vocabulary that you've learnt. Um, and just to let you know, by the way, right, if you are enjoying the lesson and you want more live lessons and you want to study more with me, I do have this course over here, bum, up here. IELTS Speaking Success, Get a Band 7 Plus, the gold course. There is also the regular course, um, which is cheaper, but the gold course has two live lessons a month, the private group, all the activities to practice the speaking success system. You can find out more details if you go to my website, thekeithspeakingacademy.com, you'll find out all the information about that course and you can go and check it out. 
What we're going to do right now, though, is have a game of Kahoot. And Kahoot is a chance for us to review some of the language that we've been looking at today. Uh, it's quite fun. It's quite fast. Um, but it, it's a good opportunity to consolidate. Nice word. To review and fix the language in your head a little bit. So let's go and have a look at this game. What you need to do, right, is to stay with me here, but also go to, come over here, go to kahoot.it, to the website. Um, and if you write your name and the pin, I'll give you in a moment, then we can play the game together. So you need to stay with me here, but on another screen or another tab, um, go to Kahoot and I'll set up the game and we can play together. It's fun, trust me. Uh, Mohammed, you say, have I removed the course from Udemy? Yes, Mohammed, I have. I've moved the course from Udemy to my main website for a number of reasons. There is still one course on Udemy, but the main one has moved over to my website. It's the same course. Um, it's still there on the website, but you're right. Yes. Okay. Let's have a look. Stacy's got hungry watching this lesson. I am not surprised. Stacy, I am starving. <laughs> Absolutely starving. But don't worry, we're nearly there. Um, I'm going to have an early lunch after this, I promise you. Classic mode. So here's the pin that you need. Let me show you. Okay, so you go to www.kahoot.it. The pin is 5230732. I'll say that again. The pin is 5230732. You've got some people joining already. Come and join us. Just put in your name. You can make up a name if you want, put your real name, it's fine. And there's the pin, and let's begin in a moment. I'll just explain how to play. Um, you're going to get four questions. Each question is a multiple choice. You have four answers. Um, you have to choose the colour. I will read out the answer, but if you stay on this screen, you'll see the answer as well. Um, and you choose one of the four and do it as fast as you can because there's a time limit of 30 seconds per question or per answer. Hmm. There's a few more Keiths in here. Right, I'll just uh, wait a few seconds while we uh, get in. I'm gonna mute so I can just finish my Mandarin. Okay, great. Guys, we're going to begin. We've got just over 100 people in. I think that's great. Listen, if you can't get in, don't worry. You can put your answer in the chat box as well. That's absolutely fine. Here we go then. Let's start. Food. This is quite difficult, the first question. <laughs> Which is the odd one out? Meaning, which one is different? Mouth-watering, delicious, tempting, or appetizing? This is quite tricky. So, which one is different? Mouth-watering, delicious, tempting, or appetizing? Kim, don't worry. You can put your answer in the chat box. It's fine. Johnny Beck, well done. Spring, well done. The answer, oh, oh, oh my God. The answer is delicious. This is the first time ever that 
the majority have got the wrong answer. Whoa, what? That has never happened. Um, nearly always the majority get the right answer. Oh, now, I, I do admit this was a very, very tricky question. So those of you who've got it right, congratulations. I'll explain why, okay? Delicious is the taste of the food, right? Mouth-watering is what the food looks like before you taste it. Tempting is what the food looks like. And appetizing is it looks nice. So mouth-watering, tempting and appetizing are all talking about the food before you eat it, what it looks like. The actual taste is delicious. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what a nasty question, right? But don't worry. Well done, those of you who've got it right. Listen, let's see the scoreboard. Sunni's up on the top. We've got Duong, Alfred, Arikikaz, and Melon. Okay, question number two. It was so expensive, we blank out more than we should have. Knifed, forked, spooned, plated. This one's a bit easier, right? It was so expensive, we blank out more than we should have. Knifed, forked, spooned or plated. Well done, Maria. Well done, Tanja. You've got it. Oh, that's more like it. Yes, we forked out. Um, there's no such thing as to knife. Well, actually, there is. <laughs> there is. Interesting. To knife somebody is to stab with a knife. Interesting. Um, spoon. <laughs> yes, very colloquial. I won't explain that. You can discover that on your own. Um, and to plate is to put the food on the plate. In the restaurant, when you put the food on the plate, you plate the food. But the one here about spending too much money to fork out, right? Well done. You're paying attention. That has cheered me up. No end. Let's see how we're doing then. Duong has moved up. Alfred is in second. Victory is mine, is almost there, third place. Um, Melon and Laura has moved in, or Laura. Great. Next question. She won't any she won't eat any greens. She is such a blank eater. Mussy dussy fussy tussy. <laughs> she won't eat any greens. Greens meaning vegetables, by the way. Um, obviously green vegetables. She is such a blank eater. Getting easier and easier. I should have started with this one. Well done, Kim. Well done, Shabnam. Jane, you've got it. Oh, lovely. So 70 of you got the right answer. Fussy. To be honest, the other words, I just made them up. They don't exist. <laughs> Only fussy. So let's see how that leaderboard is looking. Duong is up there. Victory is mine. I think victory is mine. It's coming up to the top place. Um, and the other places are all being mixed up with uh, Melon, Laura and Alfred. And Raffaella is the highest climber. Listen, guys, it's the last question. Here we go. It's the best thing since sliced blank. <laughs> Potatoes, tomatoes, cheese, bread. It's the best thing since sliced blank. Maria, well done. Grace found me, well done. Clara, are you really victory is mine? Sarge, well done. And the answer, outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. That's cheered me up because I was worried after the first question, but now I'm clear that you're all awake. The last ones are always easier because we've just studied them, but even so, brilliant. 82, it's the best thing since sliced bread. And now the exciting moment of who is the winner? The podium, number three. Melon, well done. 
Victory is mine. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> and in first place. I think it's Dwong again. Well done, my friend. Lovely. Alfred, you're a runner-up. And Sanveen also got a quick runner-up. Well done. Uh, great. Okay. So, guys, well done. Absolutely brilliant. Um, it's been an interesting lesson. I hope so. Anyway, we've been talking about food. Um, we've looked at lots of different things today. Um, it's been a bit long, but I think you've managed to stay with me. We've talked about food. We've been talking a lot about different um, vocabulary to look at there. Uh, we've been talking about special occasions and your signature dish and the national dish and the kind of, well, spending a lot of money, right, on special occasions, forking out a lot, spending a fortune more than you should maybe. We talked about eating habits, about binge eating, about snacking, comfort eating, going on diets and all of that stuff. Um, we've had a quick look at Keith kind of in the kitchen and getting people around the table, right? And which was quite interesting. And of course, we've had some idioms um, such as the proof is in the pudding. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you want the notes, so over here, we've got, not over here, over here. All of these notes from today's lesson um, go onto my website, which is the Keith Speaking Academy. Um, I'll just show you how you can find them or get them, but it's fairly obvious because if you go to the website, um, you'll see this. You'll see at the very, very top, it says, oops, it says free live lessons, right? If you click on the free live lessons, then later today, maybe tomorrow, if you want to come back, um, you'll get, you'll see here, this is from last time, last month, we talked about intelligence. But you can just go, this will be updated with the new one today and you can click on the download for the PDF and you can get it there. But you can get all of the PDFs, each of these from all of the past lessons, um, for example, on habits, you can just click. It'll take you to the lesson. So you get to look at the lesson. You can watch the lesson, um, all of the past ones. So habits here. Uh, you can get, download the PDF directly and then actually study the lesson here, if you like, online. So it's all there in the free live lessons area. Um, go and check it out, right? Go and practice your study. The secret is study plus practice. That's what you need, right? Keep studying, keep practicing so you can move from being a frustrated student to being a confident English speaker. And with that confidence, bum, you're going to nail the IELTS test. So thank you very much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. I do apologize. It's been a long lesson today, but well done. I have completely finished my Mandarin. <laughs> so I'm doing all right. I'm all right, Jack. I hope the rest of you enjoy the rest of the day. Do take care. The next live lesson will be in one month's time. It'll be the beginning of June, and I can just check for you exactly. I think it's the 2nd of June will be the next live lesson. Um, but for those of you who are in the gold course, remember you can get the live lessons next week and the week after. Um, check out on the website if you're interested. That's it from me. Thank you so much for joining. It's been a, a real pleasure. Take care, all of you. Let's leave with a bit of funk music.
Go and have some food. Take care, my friends. Plums, sour, but delicious and healthy. Luscious. Cheerio. Bye-bye.